Hi everybody, welcome back to Enjoying Retirement. Today I'm going to do something fun. I'm going to make my own spear gun using parts from Neptonics.com, a great company out of Florida that sells you everything you need, um, including the wood, although I, I didn't get the wood there. This is going to be a 49 inch three band uh, spear gun, open track, made out of old growth teak that you see here. I got this at a hardwood lumber yard near me. It came in uh, eight fourths, about two and a quarter inches thick, five and a half inches wide. It was a little expensive, but uh, I'm making three guns out of it. So in the end, uh, it was well worth it. First thing we need to do is when you get it, it's probably rough on all four sides. So run it through a planer or ask them to plane it and get you a couple of good sides. So we're doing that. Uh, we're checking for squareness after we cut one edge on the table saw and it is looking very square. The problem is it's got some warp to it. Now, my experience, um, a planer is not the best tool to get rid of warp, but I have a great trick. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it slightly oversize, as you can see here, to the blank that I'm going to use. And I, I'm making it oversized because after this, I'm going to take it and using double-sided tape, attach it to a melanine shelf that I picked up at Home Depot. The reason I'm using this is the melanine covered uh, particle board shelves I have found to be extremely true, meaning that they are perfectly flat. So keep one good edge with a melanine on it. You'll run that against your table saw fence. And now you're going to put the board with the warp on it, overlapping the edge a little bit. That way, when you run the melanine board along the edge of the fence, you're going to cut off the warp on that board. And it, it works beautifully as long as you have your fence square and the table saw blade is square to the table itself. It will work beautifully. And if you can, get a woodworking blade. It leaves such a, a great finish on it. Once you finish that side, take it off the board, clean up the tape, and trim the other side. And then go ahead and trim your blank to the final dimensions that you want it to be. And double check, make sure that everything is square. I'm going to trim it a little bit, but I am not trimming it completely to length yet. I'm going to keep the muzzle length a little bit long, you'll see here in a while. Here are the parts laid out. Those are the parts I got at Neptonics. A great company to deal with, highly recommend them. And there's just a lot of joy in this. First thing I'm marking, I'm marking where the trigger is gonna go. Um, I'm gonna put it at three inches from the butt and it's three inches long, so I'm making two marks at three and six inches. And that will uh, come in handy because now I'm doing what Aside from squaring is the next most important cut there is, and that is I'm going to cut the channel. I'm going to cut the track. Um, 5 16 inch shaft. I'm going to use a 3 8 inch core box bit set to just under 5 30 seconds of an inch depth. That way it won't be a true 3 8 It'll allow me for a little bit of sanding on it. What you're seeing here is I am making multiple passes uh, to make sure that I get true dead center. Uh, it's very important that you get as close to true dead center as you can with this. Make sure it's uh, held firmly against the fence, held firmly down, and then go ahead. You want to do this in one pass. See, that's why I left it a little bit long at the end so that I can do it on the actual piece itself. And then at the end, I'm just going to trim that extra inch off, but it's given me a, a place to double check on the piece itself while I'm making it. Remember those marks of three and six inches? I'm only going to take this down to about the center of that mark, because obviously the track doesn't go beyond where the trigger mechanism is. So you just leave that alone uh, and end your track in the middle. And this is where you hope you didn't get any chatter. Uh, I, I was very lucky. Uh, I bought a set of four of these core box bits uh, off Amazon, a company called Meg Tools. They were only 13 bucks, but by golly, they work. Teeth can be hard to deal with, but they work well. 
Now I'm doing the same thing, checking square on a half inch straight bit. This is going to be what we use to cut the groove for the trigger mechanism to set in. Once you get it uh, lined up in the center, go ahead and mark each edge of it. And as you do this, uh, this will tell you where the edge is where it's cutting because this is going to be a blind cut. And since this is a straight bit, uh, you just got to kind of seesaw it in to get it started. And we're going to make multiple cuts with this, taking a little bite at a time. You don't want to try to do the whole, I think it was about 0.9 inches deep that I take it. Um, so just, just take about 3 eighths of an inch at a time until you get it. But make sure that your marks are lining up with the outside mark of the bit each time. There's the first cut, looking good. I'm going to raise the bit up a bit, make a second cut, and I'm going to make about three passes as we get through here. I enjoy woodworking, so uh, after a lifetime of uh, woodworking and tool collecting, I'm fortunate to have pretty much everything I need. Um, you can get away with uh, different tools, and frankly, you can even buy a blank from Neptonics uh, that will have these cuts already made for you uh, if you don't have these tools. But for me, I enjoy the process. I enjoy uh, doing things on my own. Here I'm doing the final check of how deep uh, I want the trigger mechanism to be. And as you can see, that's a rear seating trigger mechanism that gives me a couple more inches of uh, rubber length, a little bit more powerful. Now what I'm doing is I set it in there and I marked where the trigger um, is pole is going to be because now we have to cut our trigger opening and for that we're using a 3 8 inch straight bit making the same marks and I'm also once again checking to make sure that I am dead center. Unfortunately I have to move the fence every time I change bits so that's why I have to keep checking for center. All right we're going to use the same process. It's a straight bit, so we're going to seesaw a little bit as we cut the channel for the trigger to make sure that it's going to pull straight and not bind on the wood. And of course it goes on the other side of where you cut the hole for the trigger mechanism itself. And just keep going until you're through, and right there we have it. We can't test it out to make sure it fits yet, because we need to get in there and square off the corners. The trigger mechanism is square, the bits are round, so just take a chisel and square off the corner. And at this point, um, if you need to go a little bit deeper, you can just uh, chisel out the opening uh, to where you get it. The depth I found, I believe it was about 0.9 inches, uh, that's where I start with. And the key is you want to make sure that the trigger mechanism, and this, this is the culmination of your labor here, that when it is seated, that the shaft will ride down the groove you cut in uh, and just snap right in perfectly. So after I got that done, I'm taking a little piece of dowel, smaller than what my track's going to be, wrap it with sandpaper, and then just evenly sand it all the way down and you can get a surprisingly good finish. If the shaft and trigger don't line up perfectly, you can always sand this a little bit more or chisel out the trigger mechanism until you get a perfect fit. And here we go, we're doing the test. That's the snap we want to hear. All right, that's it. We're going to go into part two next, but the hard work is now done. We can enjoy the rest of it. All right, take care. Thanks for watching.